I am a good gardener. I sing to myself and cut off their leaves and cart off their dead without so much as a note, so much as a hum for anyone but me. I am shade that the plants cover out of shame. I cover out of shame. I peer at the sun as it shortens me and think, perhaps I will seed my own roses after all. I will make them tart and crooked in the calm. The cardinal frills rinse to a noxious fungal plum. Crimped and thornless, they will die in the spring, pruned to perfect naked sticks. Then they will belong to no one but me, and I will be free to love them, to crave them, to press their bodies between my pages and lay in their imprints. Cultivate me. Peel my limbs from this too fertile bed and let the roots dangle loose. I want to be exposed and stung. I want to open my mouth and have winds splash out. I want to do it myself. I want to do it myself, but I am a good gardener and no one hears me sing. I glance at the pen in my feeble nurtured hand. I am too still thinking of flowers and seasons. I crave a purple Mont Blanc and the savage stories it would tell. I want to be fearsome, to be vicious, respected, admired, and craved above all things. I want to spread my book and brave its mountainous blanks. I would stamp my imprints upon the snow if my pen could stamp, if my pen did not skim. Outside this inside room, a sparrow chokes a worm to death. I see them, both sparrow and worm, until the first jaws gather and his throat billows out like a warship's belligerent sails. The worm was a worm, but now she is secret prized meat in a sordid brig. The conqueror cocks his head. He dares me to tap on the thin plated glass between us. He dares me to recall the worm as worm, how she crept aground from her stale, constricting hole into another. I strike the window with two wooden fists. The sparrow flies to somewhere. The worm travels further in his belly than she ever did outside of it. I see them together, for she is him and he is her, vanish behind a faraway lamppost. They are swept like crumbs through the blue of a stately soaring rug until they are rug too, stately too, and blue. The window shakes under my stiff, sweating palms. I hate them. The sparrow for soaring to somewhere and the worm for going further than the rest. I perch on my curved maple sill, my back a solid stripe of red to the lampposts and the sun and the trees and the neighbor purging her lawn with thick, swarthy spills. Alone, I am chilled by the day. There is my armless clock with its dull, pulsing hours. There is my bird preening her feathers. There is my makeup. There are my photos. There is my stereo sputtering Vivaldi. I keep time. There is my dresser. There are my books. There is the glove I could not find. That spoon coruscates. That aria drones. My bedpost staggers. I am a boreal. Barking on bark trees, yellow-hatted green. Greed for a blue darker than light, lighter than dark, and the dog is silent. My dog is Orphic, on a dry wooded deck, pepper muzzled and dozing, or rustling awake into the green, gray far from his midday. I am thinking of his paws in the shallow, undug dirt, while he thinks of nothing. He is present in green and king. I am hearing his yellow trees from inside the house. His setting is plush, his day is ripe, my day is plucked. Planted in folds of flora, my stocking feet begin to itch. They are in sheets and under covers with a verdant mattress underneath. I am high against the glass, within its frame, above the room, but in. I smell it now. Just past the window crank, the sour pong of poison snakes. Flicking its tongue, it tastes for wildflowers. I am stroked by it. Languid, I return to the desk that nests along the closet, thinking of the poem I left malnourished and half-formed. It writhes under my eyes. I want to finish it. I could finish it. I should, but you will. You will be the one to graze the fields of wet ballads. You will dip your wing in and deep past the poetry of its reflection and claw doggedly and burrow convincingly until you are the mud under your nails, wild and dark, rich and splendid. Tell me how it ends, second hand. Second hand is always how I will know it. There is my clock, there is my bird, my makeup, my phone, Vivaldi. I keep time. I keep time. I keep time. I perish by time, by attachment, by this warm room cramped with loving faces. I love these faces, and I love the room, and I love warmth, and I love love. But I complain, and I smother, and I live like I die, without a lapping, stinging breath of salt water and Celtic weeds. Home is a home is a home is a home. My bird chooses this moment to stand on my head. She knows what weeds mean, what trees mean. She knows the copper fruit and chimps and colonies without seeing. 
She speaks and promenades steel trappings in place of sloping orange branches beneath her feet. I, landlocked, know nothing of capture.